For more than 30 years, the cochlear implant has been transforming lives. Invented in Australia, it's had great success in helping deaf babies learn to hear and speak. But the treatment is also becoming increasingly popular amongst older people who are struggling to cope with the loss of their hearing. Emma Pollard reports. Lucas Morley's world has changed dramatically. Two, three, go! For the first time, he's really hearing the sounds that shape his life. Lucas and his twin brother Jarvis were born healthy at 35 weeks. Some red flags were raised during Lucas's routine hearing test, but he was eventually given the all clear. But by the time the boys were two, his parents realised there was something wrong. We were sort of joking that Lucas never hears us, he never listens. And then we just looked at each other and went, oh my gosh, you know, he never listens. He doesn't turn around when you call his name, he doesn't say his name. After a string of hearing tests, an audiologist delivered the devastating news. I was asking questions afterwards and I you sort of thinking of the future of your child and I said, would he, um, would his hearing get worse? Would he be a very deaf old man? And she just looked at me and she said, it's a very, very deaf little boy now. His hearing can't really get much worse. In shock, the family went straight to the Hear and Say Centre for help. They've not only given us hope, they've just thrown us a lifeline and worked beside us every step of the way. This is the day that changed everything. As you can see, you're on our camera. Yeah. So we'll keep your film this for you so you've got a cochlear. Two weeks after having surgery to fit his cochlear implants, Lucas is at Brisbane's Hear and Say Centre to have the devices switched on. And we might just see how comfy he is. If it falls off, doesn't matter. A team of audiologists painstakingly sets the levels of stimulation needed for electrodes to activate the hearing nerve. At first, Lucas doesn't respond. But it isn't long until there's a breakthrough. Did you hear something? Who's over there? Each time the team sees a reaction from Lucas, they move a puppet around. It trains him to look for the puppet as soon as he hears the beep. Did you hear it? Hello, good job. Once the electrodes are mapped, comes the moment his parents, family and friends have been waiting for. No, he's already picking it up, is he? Yeah. Hello. His eyes say it all. Lucas has gone from a silent existence to one with sound. Go. Lou, listen. The cochlear implants are just the start. One, two, three, Go. Good boy! Lucas needs continuous audio verbal therapy to learn to listen and to speak. Meow! Meow! <gasps> the family is hopeful that with a lot of hard work, he'll be able to go to the same primary school as his twin brother. I know the implant's been in for about a week and it's pretty good already, so. We'll just keep going and getting him mapped and, and, and see where we end up. What I love to do with parents is to say to them, um, whatever it was that you dreamed for your child before they were born, I want you to start thinking about what they were and dreaming them again because everything is possible. Dimity Dornan founded the Hear and Say program in 1992. Is that you as parents are going to be what determines his outcome. Now it helps about 400 children in Queensland each year. Wow, what's that? Look at these glasses. About 94% of the program's graduates enter mainstream primary school classes. We can turn a child who has absolutely no hearing to a child who has hearing within the normal range and can be just the same as a child with normal hearing out there in the mainstream. The introduction of infant hearing screening has increased the number of children needing help and the amount of funding that's required. We expect our numbers to double by 2015. At the other end of the spectrum, 94-year-old Conzi Crotty is preparing to become one of the oldest Australians to have a cochlear implant. 
She's been hearing impaired for 50 years and is now losing her vision. And I don't want to be both deaf and blind completely. Where the hell would I be? Without the government assistance she's entitled to because of her military background, she wouldn't be able to afford the technology. Oh, it'll make a hell of a big difference. And uh, somebody said it's like magic, really. Conzi is part of a growing group. Last year, 120 Australians aged 85 and over received cochlear implants. But doctors say that's a drop in the ocean compared to how many could benefit. In older folk, you keep them independent, you keep them in their own homes. Um, not being able to hear in an older person is quite uh, dangerous uh, and uh, is very isolating. And many uh, of those uh, elderly implantees may not have been able to continue living independently without restoration of their hearing. Ear, nose and throat surgeon Dr Sharon Kelly says the state government funds seven implants a year at her hospital, but it's not enough. We have uh, more than 25 people on our waiting list, so we simply can't even implant the number of people on our waiting list currently, and that's growing. There are also problems with the high cost of replacing the external part of the implants in adults. Publicly funded implantees are not funded for a replacement, so effectively after five years uh, they have to self-fund a replacement, and that's several thousands of dollars. Poor daddy. The use of cochlear implants was once considered experimental, but has become the gold standard treatment. The next challenge is raising awareness and funding to ensure everyone benefits. Queensland Health says it doubled the number of paediatric cochlear implants in last year's budget and it's working through the waiting list. Emma Pollard with that story.